This is Tom Gokey with Orthopedic Educational Services. Today we're going to talk about Salter Harris fractures. A Salter Harris fracture occurs primarily in a pediatric population. It is a result of skeletal injuries that occur in the patients between the ages of 8 and 15. It is a result of trauma and patients will present with pain and tenderness overlying the physis, there will be associated swelling, and they'll have limited use of their extremity. In this cartoon, you'll see that in the Salter Harris 1 injury, there's usually no disruption of the epiphysis or physis. In a Salter Harris 2 injury, there's force through the physis and exits out through the metaphysis. In a Salter Harris 3 injury, the force goes through the physis and exits out into the epiphysis. In a Salter Harris 4, there's fracture line that goes through both the metaphysis and the epiphysis. And in a Salter Harris 5, there is a crushing injury that occurs through the growth plate. So in this picture here, a Salter Harris 1 fracture shows that there is a fracture through the physis, and you can see the slippage here. But in many cases, patients will have tenderness overlying the physis, but have no abnormalities on x-ray. This is what I call a diagnosis of suspicion. In a Salter Harris 2 injury, it is the most common type of Salter Harris fracture. And in this x-ray, you see of the proximal phalanx, there is a fracture through the epiphysis and, I'm sorry, through the physis and exits out through the metaphysis. Some of these will require reduction and the overall prognosis is good. In a Salter Harris 3 fracture, the fracture line goes through the physis and exits out through the epiphysis. There can be some long-term implications for growth arrest. Most of these that are displaced will require surgery, but overall in a non-displaced fracture with good blood supply, the prognosis is good. In a Salter Harris 4 fracture, the fracture line goes through the physis and exits out through both the metaphysis and the epiphysis. And you can see this here in the medial malleolus fracture where this fracture line goes from the articular surface of the distal tibia through the epiphysis, through the physis, and out through the metaphysis. Most all of these require surgery and the overall prognosis is not very good. In a Salter Harris 5 injury, there is a crush injury that occurs at the physis. And you can see here in the middle of this distal tibia a narrowing of the growth plate in compared to the lateral and medial uh, aspects of the growth plate. So a quick mnemonic to help you to remember the classification for Salter Harris fractures. S means a slide or suspect of a fracture in that area where the growth plate is injured. The A means that the growth plate fracture occurs above the physis into the metaphysis. The L or 3, Salter Harris 3, occurs below the, the physis into the epiphysis. In a Salter Harris 4, T means through, so the fracture line goes through the physis and exits out in both of the metaphysis and the epiphysis. And lastly, in a Salter Harris 5, the R is crush or rammed injury, meaning there's a crush injury to the physis itself. So our question for today is, in a patient who has a Salter Harris injury, what x-ray finding would you expect to see in a Salter Harris 3 type injury? If you know the answer to that question, go to our webpage www.orthoedu.com and give us your answer in the contact us section. For Orthopedic Educational Services, I'm Tom Gokey. Have a great PA week.